Hi, I hope you're well today. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and this is Friday morning, April the 24th, 2020, and I'd like to share some thoughts with you from God's Word this morning. I was reading recently in the Psalms, as I am habitually doing day by day, and I came across Psalm 1, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about our delight. The Bible says this in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And right away at the beginning of this psalm, I see a real stark contrast. There are those who are warned not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. And there is a digression here. The person who's being mentioned is walking first and then he stands and then he sits. And the implication is of coming to a place of agreement and determining to stay there. And the Bible warns against taking counsel from the world, from ungodly people, from embracing worldly philosophies. And the contrast is found in verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. In other words, he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He does not stand in the way of sinners. He does not sit in the seat of the scornful. He doesn't follow the wisdom of this world. Instead, he bases his life on the wisdom of God and his delight is in the law of the Lord. This word delight is interesting. It means desire. It means it's something that we consider pleasant. And this person delights in the law of the Lord. He, he desires it. It's something that he considers to be pleasant, and he meditates in it day and night. And there is stability and security and success. He talks in the last few verses of this psalm about that person who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates in it day and night, being like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And so here is stability, and here is security, here is success. And we see this person who's made this decision not to follow the wisdom of the world, not to listen to ungodly counselors or take ungodly counsel, but rather to line up his life with the word of God and with what the scriptures teach as far as God's wisdom is concerned, that person will be experiencing provision and prosperity, and he will be stable and secure and successful in his life. That person will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And whatever he does will prosper, but the ungodly are not so. People who choose to follow the wisdom of the world, the philosophies of the world, don't have the same positive results that they can claim in their life, although they may find themselves um, prospering in the world. They ultimately will not prosper in the things that are most important if they reject God's truth and God's wisdom and God's counsel. And I think we would all agree that's not the way to go. We should be very careful uh, of where we get our ideas, where we get our philosophies, whom we listen to, because we might be listening to somebody's false view, something that's contrary to the Word of God. Instead, meditate on the Word of God and think about things God's way. You know, we talk about divine paradoxes, 
and the Bible is full of them, things that don't seem to be true, that seem like they're counterintuitive, but they're absolutely true. And what's the reason for that? Well, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But also, I think God created things to be sort of um, contrary to human reasoning because he just wants us to trust him. That doesn't seem like it's right. Doesn't seem like it ought to be that way. Well, okay. Will you trust the Lord or will you, will you trust your own sense, your own instinct, your own opinions? Where will you get your ideas? And it's important that we weigh our thoughts and that we choose our philosophies and test them in light of God's word and that we see if they line up with divine truth or not before we will embrace them and put them to practice in our life. You know, we know this, and if you've known the Lord very long, you've seen a lot of people go their own way and ignore the things of the Lord and and end up in a very bad place and often fail miserably at life. And there are a whole lot of things that are more important than being a success in business or having a large retirement account. And ultimately, those things won't matter at all. How do you form your life? What do you, what do you base your life decisions on? The Bible says, don't, don't walk in the way of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. Don't get your ideas and your philosophies from this world. Instead, delight in God's law and meditate in it and go to God for the answers to life's most compelling questions and practical questions, things for which we need answers. Go to God, go to the Lord. He will see you through and his truth will be the right response in every case. And that person who follows that truth will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and will be prospering and will be fruitful and successful in the ways that are most important. God bless you today.